Hey there, I'm going to show you how to create generative art from a series of different image assets using the looks generator, or as we call it in the all rats project, the generator. First, you want to go to github.com slash click pop slash looks. You want to make sure that you have Git installed on your machine. And uh, I'm going to actually be showing you how to do this on a Windows computer, and I'll be telling you how to do it on a Mac or Linux computer, because Windows makes it a little bit harder. The first thing, though, you're going to grab either through SSH or HTTPS this uh, link that you need. Then you're going to, in Terminal, um, navigate your way to the uh, folder that you want to add the generator to. So I'm in my git slash tutorial. Then I'm going to type in git clone. And then the link I just copied, that's going to download um, the contents of that repository to my computer. I already did that. So I'm going to jump into that directory. There it is. It's already downloaded. And the next thing that you're going to want to do is in your text editor or IDE, you're going to open up that folder and you're going to create a file called config.json. Let me zoom a little bit. So you, there we go. Config.json. And then what do you put in config.json? You're going to go back over to the uh, repository. And here we have this example file. Just copy and paste this in. So I already have it in mind, but you're going to copy and paste this into config.json and save it. And see that config.json is in the root of my looks uh, folder that I just cloned. Now let's walk through what is in here. The first section is called input. And inside of that, you'll see something called local. That means we're going to uh, take pieces from a local file. And it's going to look for a path name, a folder. In this case, it's called pieces. You can see in my sidebar, I have this pieces folder that has some images in it. And it's going to look for a pattern for the name of those images that starts with the type it is. In my case over here, you can see it's background dash and foreground dash. We'll get into that a little bit more. And then a dash, then the name, whoops, the name of the piece. And then a file type. So it'll accept all these background dash dark, foreground dash green. It understands that. The next section is output. And that, again, is talking about outputting. When it creates an image, it's going to send that image to a local directory called output. You see I have that directory here, but it's empty because I haven't generated any images yet. And image count, this is the number of images you want to generate. To start, I'm just going to make that one because we'll practice just generating one. Uh, next section is general settings for your generator. The first thing is max workers. This is uh, how many workers you're going to have generating images. Keep this at three. Um, you can increase it to more, and that will make generation happen faster, which really doesn't matter unless you're generating hundreds of images. But also, the larger you make this uh, number, the more likely it is that it'll crash your computer. <laughs> so leave it at three, maybe five. The next section is piece order. And this is where you start thinking about how you're going to build your image. In um, my case, I'm going to have two layers. I'm going to have a background color and a foreground shape and color. So a background color and a foreground triangle, that's a different color. So I want background to be the first piece. That's going to be the bottom piece with foreground laid on, to laid on top of it. So if you wanted another layer like a hat that was on top of that, you would just add another comma, type in hat, and now I have support for three types of pieces. All right, rarity. This can get complex. You can have multiple rarities that you uh, that have a higher likelihood of showing up in your generator. But for the basics of this tutorial, we're going to ignore rarity. So just leave one rarity and the chance that that rarity will come up as one, which is 100%. OK, now let's get into the actual attributes. So attributes are the actual design assets that are going to build your image. Uh, and you can see nested inside of attributes, I have uh, one piece or one attribute called background and one called foreground. Those are my two types of images that are going to get layered. And it's very important that these names for those attributes match the layers that I defined earlier. So if I uh, were to add hat as another type, I would need to make sure that I had hat as a, a section of attributes. Now inside my attributes for background, you can see that I have another 
uh, container called pieces, and I have dark and light. And here it's important that these piece names correspond to the second half of my image names. So background is the first part, dash, piece name, dark and light. And you can see those here. Same thing with foreground. Pieces, uh, the foreground is the first part, dash, green or pink. And I'm just going to go one more time back to the file name patterns. So it's taking the attribute name and then the piece name, a dash piece name. All right, so we're all set up. I have the images in my input file. They're all named correctly. I have all my attributes set up. Now let's generate some images. Quick caveat, if you're using Windows to do this work, you're going to need to do an extra step. You're going to have to go to releases on the GitHub page. That's github.com slash clickpop slash looks and click on this latest release. And then you're going to download one of these exe files, depending on your uh, processor. You're going to download that and then you're going to put it into your looks folder. So you can see here I downloaded the looks windows AMD version and it's in my looks uh, folder. If you're on Linux or OS X, you shouldn't have to do this. Uh, so let's jump back into the terminal now. Now we get to run some fun commands and see if it, uh, if it all works. But the command uh, on OS X is called looks-generator, and we're going to use a flag called no meta. When you get really complex with the generator, you can also generate meta files that have all the information about your pieces. But for the time being, um, I think that overcomplicates this. So if I was on OS X or Linux, I would just write looks generate dash dash no dash meta. I'd hit enter and that would generate files and, or images and put them in my output folder. So since I'm using the executable, the .exe file, instead here, I'm gonna run dot slash and then the name of that file generate. So the same same command after uh, this dot slash command replaces looks generate no meta. It's going to do its thing. You can see here that it was loading files. It loaded them all up. It layered them. It created the image and then it tells me that it generated one file. So now if I jump back over into my editor, you can see there's an image in this output file. Boom, there it is. You can see that it, it randomly pulled together background dark and foreground pink and created this image. Now, once I'm ready, I, I have everything working correctly. I can go in here and I can change the image count to something like 10 if I want to create 10 or 500 if I want to cre create 500 and it will do the work for me. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, thanks a lot and have fun.